Well, welcome. Hello. Yep, there we are. We are live with this conversation we're about to have with these three incredible Switch students. Right next to me is Miss Lisi from Stillwater, our Switch out there. Then we've got Cameron right next to her from Shawnee. And on the end there, we have Karsten. He's out at Mustang. He just came out of football practice, drove across town to be here for you. He specifically requested though, that you would throw a honey badger emoji in the chat for him. So go ahead and find the honey badger emoji. It's there, he showed us that it exists. Throw that in the chat for him. He specifically requested it. And what that's gonna let us do is make sure that we're all in the right mentality as we're about to go into this interview. And because it's live, that also means that if they say something crazy, we can't edit it out. Like it's there. They gotta live with it. At one point, Karsten said, hey, the last time I sat in a chair like this, I got a cramp. I fell out of my chair and started crying. And so what I told him is, hey man, if that happens, just roll with it. Like literally roll across the stage, get out of the camera shot and we'll just, we'll just keep on going. Everybody feel good? We're all ready for this? Okay, so uh, here's what I wanna do. I want to hear from you a question that we can give to them to kind of get things started, right? So give them an easy question just to break the ice so they can feel a little bit more comfortable. So chat, drop down a question below. While you're doing that, they're gonna introduce themselves, kind of tell you just a little bit about them. And then once we get through that, I will ask your question to them. So, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, tell us your name, favorite color, what grade you're in, and something else. Oh dang, look at all these honey badger emojis. All right, sorry, keep, go ahead, Lisey. Okay, so my name is Lisey. I am 17 years old. I'm currently a senior at Stillwater High School. Um, my favorite color is blue. What was the last question? That's it, that's perfect. There we go. Hey, y'all better just show some appreciation for Lisey because apparently she didn't know that this was gonna be live until like 30 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> and she about like freaked out when she found that out. And I was like, wait, Cameron and Carson, you guys knew this was live, right? And both of them said, yeah, yeah, we knew. So, all right, go ahead, Cameron, take it away. My name is Cameron and I'm 17. I'm currently a senior and my favorite color is blue. Wonderful. Carson? My name is Carson. Uh, I'm 17. I'm a junior and my favorite color is yellow. <laughs> All right, so we've gotten like so many good questions, but it's hard to actually read them because of all the honey badgers in the chat. So Karsten, they did it. They came through for you. So here's what we'll do. Uh, we got the, oh gosh, the chat is literally going so fast. I just lost it. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do this one that I just saw. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Why? I've never seen a Star Trek movie. That's embarrassing. I've never seen either. Okay. <laughs> I'm with Lisi on that one. I've never seen either. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, uh, see you next week. I'm out. I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm like a, a super big nerd, so I love all things Star Wars. Uh, Star Trek is, is good, but not great. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually get started now. Now that we're all comfortable, we've gotten a little bit of the giggles out. Because again, y'all, this is literally live. Like it's live right now. This is terrifying. If you're not scared, you probably should be. Because all the people judging you. Karsten, how does that make you feel? I'm here. <laughs> he said, I'm here. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, our theme for Switch this year is from God, hope and power. Because what we know is that our faith is so much more than wishful thinking. We know that because of Jesus, because of what he's done, that we can have hope, that our future will be brighter and better than our past. And we have a part to play in making that future a reality. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hear from Lisi, from Cameron and from Karsten, different ways that they are choosing to use the power they have from God for the good of others. How they're choosing to have hope and to bring hope to the people in their lives. So question number one, tell us about the first time you realized that you had the power to make a difference. Cameron, you're looking at me intently. I think you're ready for this question. So Cameron, tell us about the first time you realized you had the power to make a difference. Okay, so the first time I realized that the power to make a difference was my eighth grade year. I had two really close friends and they had actually come to a church camp with me and neither of them had grown up in church or really had a relationship with God. They knew about him, but they didn't know him. And throughout our friendship, they eventually sat down with me and they were like, Cameron, we've seen the way you love Jesus and try to live like Jesus. And we wanna have that type of relationship. And so at the end of the day, they ended up choosing to follow Christ and giving their life to Christ. And I just realized that if I can make that much of an impact with just a friendship, when I really set my mind to it, there's so much more I can do. 
Can we like drop the mic emoji? Is that a thing? Because what you just said there was fantastic. Double praise hands in the chat. Come on, Cameron. You said you were, what, what grade? Um, I think eighth grade. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yep, I was just playing Call of Duty in the eighth grade. So that is wonderful. I love it. it Lisey, what about you? Tell us about the first time you realized you had the power to make a difference. So I think the first time I realized I had the power to make a difference was actually last year, the end of last year. Um, I had realized that the best place to make a difference was in my church. So I decided I wanted to make a difference by inviting, inviting, inviting. So I just began to invite people all the time to come serve along with me on the hospitality team. And so the more and more people that began to serve with me, the more I saw a change in my community. And I was like, if a simple invite can do this much and has this much movement in my small community, then I can make, I can do so many more things. Come on, somebody. Let's go. How many people did you invite to serve with you? I think close to 10 within a couple months. So within a couple of months, you invited 10 different people to come and serve with you at church. Like it's one thing to invite somebody to come to church and like attend a service. It's another thing entirely to invite somebody to start serving and using their gifts in the church. Like that is a big deal. And you're, how old you said? 17? 17. <laughs> come on. All right, Karsten. <laughs> We're going on to question number two for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm here. All right. Good man. Good man. Make sure to keep that mic up here. All right. So uh, first week of Switch Online, here's what we did. We talked about the importance of being committed to seeking God and learning the truth when it comes to us uh, playing our part in bringing hope to others. Because we know that in order for us to do what's right, we have to know what's right. So here's my question for you. What are some practices or habits that you've developed personally to help you learn the truth and stay rooted in God's word? So what are some practices or habits that you've developed that help you learn the truth and stay rooted in God's word? One thing that's helped a lot is growing up in a Christian family. We've gone to church every Sunday, of attending those church services and then serving on the weekends also, being involved and being rooted into those classrooms. It's helped me being able to stay connected to God through everything that's going on. And then my switch group on Wednesdays, being with them all the time, communicating with them through everything we go through, just having them there for me. It keeps me connected and keeps me from straying too far away from what I need to do. It's fantastic. I think it's such an important thing to even hear what he was talking about is so much of is it uh, so much of what you said is based off of having the right people around you because we know that we become like the people we spend time with. So if we spend time with incredible people with strong faith, that's going to help us have a stronger faith. So I absolutely love that. Cameron, what about you? So for me at the start of quarantine, I was like, super read my Bible for 30 minutes every day. And I really made that time for God. But now that school has started back, I'm not going to lie. Life gets really hectic and really busy. But some things I do to keep myself on track is just start and end my day with Jesus, no matter what it looks like. So in the morning, even if all I do is read the verse of the day and listen to worship music in my car on the way to school, then that's what I'm going to do. And at night, I'll do maybe more of an in-depth plan and try to spend some more time in prayer. I just try to start my day on a good note and end my day on a good note because everything in between between can get really crazy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's an understatement that everything in between can get really crazy. So I know that I didn't tell you that I was gonna ask you this question beforehand, but do you have like a favorite Bible plan or maybe something you're reading right now that if somebody else is looking for a great place to start that you would recommend? So my favorite Bible plan I've ever done is called It's Not Supposed to Be This Way. And I found it a long time ago, but then whenever all the corona stuff started happening, I was just, it really came back to me because nothing was supposed to be this way, but it is, and there's nothing we can do about it. So it really helped me learn to accept everything. It's fantastic. So you heard it. It's not supposed to be this way. Search that in U version. You can start that plan. If you don't have the U version Bible app, come on, people. What are you waiting for? It's free. You can download it. Like 400, I think 50 million people have already done it. So like you would fit in. You're like you'd be cool if you download U version. That's probably how we should encourage people to read the Bible is is peer pressure, right? You think so, Lisi? Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, all right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move on to the next question. And uh, Lisi, I'm gonna have you answer this one. So. Uh, I wanna know from you, who is somebody in your life that supports you, that encourages you, that challenges you to be the best you can be? I would say someone that challenges me to be the best I can be is my switch leader, Heather. Um, she's been my switch leader all of high school, so four years now. 
But I think she's a really good person to go to when I feel like down or I'm in a situation I'm not sure how I should handle it properly or how God would want to hand would want me to handle it. So she's just a good person to to turn to when I'm struggling and I need somebody there for me. That's so good. Let me ask you this. So what is it like if you think about Heather, right? What is like one specific quality that you really appreciate about her? Um, I I love how she's a leader. She's not a follower. She's really she's really always there to tell you how it is straight up. If I'm in the wrong, she's gonna be like, Hey Lisey, I love you, but you're in the wrong and this is what you need to do. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Do you do you guys, this, is, this might just show like, so back in the day, the show American Idol had a guy on it named Simon Cowell. Are you familiar with who he is? He was like the really direct British guy. So he was incredible. And it sounds like Heather is your Simon Cowell. Yeah, for sure. Fantastic. If you don't have a Simon Cowell, you need one. If you've ever watched the auditions for American Idol, that's why all of us need a Simon Cowell. You know, because they, all the bad singing. All right, cool. Just making sure we're all on the same page. All right, Cameron, what about you? Uh, tell us about somebody in your life that uh, supports you, encourages you, and challenges you to be the best that you can be. Okay, so the person in my life who does this for me is actually one of my friends from Switch, and his name is Connor. And I only really knew my small group and my small group leader at Switch until we became friends. But there's different types of friendships you have, and some of them are, like, more encouraging. But the friendship I've had with him has always been more of a challenging type of friendship because he's seen me whenever I've been hurting. He made me feel seen when I had lost sight of myself. Whenever he knew I was struggling, he would make me talk about it with him, but he wouldn't just say, oh, okay, I see you're going through that. He would say, what are you going to do about it? And he would hold me accountable to that, which might not always have been what I wanted, but it was always what I needed. So to have a friend like that, without that, I wouldn't be anywhere near to where I am spiritually. Come on, somebody. It wasn't always what she wanted, but it was exactly what she needed. Quote her, put it in the chat, tweet it, Instagram, do all of the things. And then make sure, Cameron, quote her, give her credit. Don't rob that from her. That's messed up. That's plagiarism. <sighs> you ready for the next question, Karsten? Let's hear it. You just, you just gave me that smile and I was like, man, that's, that's, a, that's a gift right there, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me, let me reopen this because it, it closed on my phone. Uh, okay, yes, yes, yes. This is the thing. Uh, so let me ask you this, Karsten. So uh, we talked about how when it comes to hope, right, it's this belief that the future can be brighter and better than the past. And it's the understanding that we have a part to play in making that happen. So let me hear from you. Uh, what are some ways that you have used your power, your influence to make a change, maybe in your community, maybe in your school, or maybe in the life of somebody else? One way I've used my influence is my positivity. A lot of people tell me I'm real social, real positive, easy to get along with. So I use that to kind of uplift the energy in the room because I know the world's always trying to bring you down. Growing up, my parents always told me that life's hard. You're not going to get by easy, but you just got to keep on going. So I feel like a lot of people need to have a little bit of positivity when they're surrounded with nothing but negativity. So bringing that into my community and everyone I'm around, it kind of helps break the ice almost. It's fantastic. So uh, earlier, while we were getting like all warmed up and prepped, uh, Karsten had a case of the burps. <laughs> and um, he said, hey man, if I've got a burp on stage, like what do I do? And so Karsten, will you, will you show us what I taught you? Well, hold on, you gotta wait till the camera's on you, bro. All right, now it is, all right, go. See, you just <laughs> away from the microphone. Mike goes one way, you go the other. Come on, somebody. That's what I like about you, Karsten. You got a smile on your face. You're, you're humble. You're teachable. All of those things. If y'all live in the Mustang area, you should be friends with this guy. All right. Pull it back up. <laughs> uh, all right. Let me do, let's, let's have uh, Cameron, same question to you. What are some of the ways that you've you, what are some of the ways <laughs> that you've used your power to make a change in your community, in your school, or in the lives of other people? So I think for me, it's more in the lives of other people because intentionality is something I've really worked on the last couple of years. And last year at the start of Switch, we had a girl come into our small group and <laughs> it was Legacy and she's become one of my best friends. But she came for the first time and I wasn't for sure if she was going to come back, but I just fell in love with her. And I would like text her and make sure she was coming back to Switch. And I just always wanted her to come. And I've been able to watch her grow so much spiritually in the last year. Like I've, got, I've watched her go from someone who just came to church to go to church to grow into someone who loves going to church and wants to be there all the time. Like she's literally there all of the time. And it's helped us like 
our friendship has grown so much because we were growing together in Jesus. And I think I was just able to be what, for her, what Connor was for me. I feel like I've been able to challenge her spiritually and help her grow. Mm, That is so good. So good. All right. Last question. Lisey, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. What words of encouragement would you share with the students listening right now? Like right on the other side of a computer screen, a phone, a whatever. What words of, because remember this is live. Yeah, this is live. Okay, cool. Just, just making sure we're still there. <laughs> so what words of encouragement would you share with them uh, who, for them, maybe they're hesitant or nervous to step out and start using their power for good? What would you say to them? Um, I think today it's really easy to fall in the pattern of what everybody else around us is doing. But I think that it's important to remember that God made us different. He set us apart from others and we are to be leaders, not followers. So when life is rough and we're not sure what to do, just remember that God has a plan and everything will be okay. Come on, somebody. Fire emojis in the chat. Double praise hands. Clap. Here's the deal. These three students just came up and said, you know what, we're gonna go out there, we're gonna be real, we're gonna be vulnerable, we're gonna do it live, so if we mess up, you can laugh at us, all of those things. And I just want you to know how thankful that I am for your willingness to share, to be vulnerable, to be honest, to be real, to be fun, to be all of those things. Um, It's seriously a gift to us. And I think what you said about the encouragement for them, knowing that you are a leader, you don't have to just be a follower, God made you exactly how you are for a reason. And I'm thankful that, the way that God made you, you have chosen to share with us, to be an example for us of what it really looks like practically as a teenager today to use the power you have for the good of others. So without further ado, thank you so much, Lisey, Cameron, and Karsten. Put some claps in the chat, do all of the things. We're so excited for you.